poem by Dean that I want to read is titled Bronze. To that dusty bubble gum, once ubiquitous as starlings, is no more, my love. Whistling dinosaurs now populate only animation studios. The furious actions of angels causing their breasts to flop out in mannerist frescoes flake away as sleet holds us in its teeth. And the bus station's old urinals go under the grindstone, and the youthful spelunkers graduate into the wrinkle-causing sun. The sea, seemingly a constant to the naked eye, is one long goodbye. Perpetually, the tide recedes, beaches dotted with debris. Unto each is given a finite number of addresses, ditties to dart the heart to its moments of sorrow and swoon. The sword's hilt glints, the daffodils bow down, all is temporary as a perfect haircut, a kitten in the lap. Yes, sitting here with you, my darling, waiting for a tuna melt and side of slaw, seems all eternity I'll ever need, and all eternity needs of me. And, uh, the one of mine I'm going to read is uh, titled The Goldberg Variations, and the last line of the poem is spoken by the person that the poem is addressed to. The Goldberg Variations. I had to look it up because I thought it was a fish. Not the tail of hair, the man you called your boy, swung behind the counter and vintage vinyl pins. We do give our heads away to hair for the nonce, which smacks of short-term wowies, but speaks imagination's desire for what's complete, for long love, the Goldberg variations, a full meal, like the BBQ a man cooked on a George Foreman spliced to an underpass pole to feed his ruthless pals. But your mullet could hardly tie his own shoes, cook beans and rice, or tend somewhere his son. But the mullet, it's all about music, the fullness of a fearless middle-aged schoolgirl crush. So forgive me if I thought, there she goes again, inviting the bad for the good. Because, of course, we do it all the time, if we live for passion. The more of things, an aria, burger bliss. So forgive me for thinking she knows better. She can't really mean maybe he'll change. Embittered and slammed so many times already, by other youngsters with fades or Hasidic locks, the one-nighter skinhead, the mohawk bouncer, because it's you who use them up for love. Can't help it. Even love that gel glizzardine. Thank you. A swarm of dawns, a flock of restless moons. There's a lot to be written in the Book of Errors. The elderly redactor is blind for all practical purposes. He has no imagination in field. Mice have gnawed away his source text for their nesting. Let me do those consonants again. He has no imagination in field. Mice have gnawed away his source text for their nesting. I loved you first, I think when you stood in the kitchen sunlight in the lazy motes of summer dust while I sliced a nectarine for Moroccan salad and the seven league boots of your private grief. Maybe the syntax is a little haywire there. <laughs> Left to itself, wire must act like Paul Clay with a pencil. Hay is the old English word for strike. You strike down grass, I guess, when it is mown. Mown. The field mice devastated the monastery garden, maybe because it was summer and the dusts were full of marsh hawks and the nights were soft with owls. They couldn't leave the herbs alone, gnawing the roots of rosemary, nibbling at sage and oregano and lemon thyme. It's too bad eglantine isn't an herb because it's a word I'd like to use here. <laughs> That's the Dean line. <laughs> Her coloring was a hybrid of rubbed amber and the little flare of dawn rose in the kernel of an almond. It's a wonder to me that I have fingertips. 
The knife was very sharp. The scented rose orange moons, quarter moons of fruit fell to the cutting board. So neatly it was as if two people lived in separate cities and walked to their respective bakeries in the rain. Her bakery smelled better than his. The sour cloud of yeast from sourdough hung in the air like the odor of creation. They both bought sliced loaves. They both walked home. They both tripped in the entry to their separate kitchens, and the spilled slices made the exact same pattern on the two floors. The nectarines smelled like the book of luck. There was a little fog off the bay at sundown in which the waning moon swam laps. The Miwoks called it moon of the only credit card. I would have given my fingertips to touch your cheekbone, and I did. That night, the old monk knocked off early. He was making it all up anyway, and he had a lot of raisin wine at Vespers. Um, I want to read Dean's poem, Sources of the Delaware. For Dean. I love you, he said, but saying it took 20 years, so it was like listening to mountains grow. I love you, she says, 50 times into a balloon, then releases the balloon into a room whose volume she calculated to fit the breath it would take to read the complete works of Charlotte Bronte aloud. Someone else pours green dust into the entryway and puts rice paper on the floor. The door is painted black. On the clothesline, shirt tails snap above the berserk daffodils. Hoagland says you've got to plunge the sword into the charging bowl. You've got to sew yourself into a suit of light. For the vacuum tube, it's easy. Just heat the metal to incandescence, and all that dark energy becomes radiance. A kind of hatching, syntactic and full of buzz. No contraindications, no laws forbidding buying gin on Sundays. No, if you're pregnant, if you're operating heavy machinery, because who isn't towing the scuttled tonnage of some self? Sometimes just rubbing her feet is enough. Just putting out a new cake of soap. Sure, the contents are under pressure, and everyone knows that last step was never intended to bear any weight, but isn't that why we're standing there? Ripples in her hair, I love you, she hollers over the propellers, <coughs> yellow scarf in mist. When I planted all those daffodils, I didn't know I was planting them in my own chest. Play irretrievably with the lid closed, Satie wrote on the score. But Hoagland says he's sick of opening the door each morning, not on diamonds, but piles of coal. And he's sick of being responsible for the eons of pressure needed. And the sea is sick of being responsible for the rain. And the river is sick of the sea. So the people who need the river to float waste to New Jersey throw in antidepressants. So the river is still sick but nervous now, too. Its legs keep thrashing out involuntarily, flooding going concerns, keeping the president awake. So the people throw in beta blockers to make it sleep, which it does, sort of, dreaming it's a snake again, but this time with 50 heads belching ammonia, which is nothing like the dreams it once had of children splashing in the blue of its eyes. So the president gets on the airways with positive vectors and vows to give every child a computer, but all this time behind the podium, his penis is shouting, put me in, coach. I can be the river. So I love you, say the flash bulbs, but then the captions say something else. I love you, says the hammer to the nail. I love Tamesha, someone sprays across the for sale sign. So I tell Hoagland it's a fucked up, ruined world in such palatial detail he's stuck for hours on the phone. Look at those crows. They think they're in on the joke and they don't love a thing. They think they have to be that black to keep all their radiance inside. I love you, the man says as his mother dies, so now nothing ties him to the earth. Not fistfuls of dirt, not the silly songs he remembers singing as a child. 
I love you, I say, meaning lend me 20 bucks. <laughs>